right, the last technique that I'm going to show you today is called Mishima. And what this is is basically an inlay technique where what we're going to do is we're, we're going to stamp or cut into the clay. You can see all these decorations that I made. And once we do that, we're going to take slip, fill those areas in, and then after this dries, we're going to scrape the surface down or sand the surface so that we reveal the clay underneath. Now, it's a little bit abstract, so I'm just going to show you. What you have to do is make sure that you fill up all those areas that you cut into. So really work on using a lot of slip, shove it down into those little recessed areas. I'm going to switch colors here and use some of the brown over here. And really dragging it across the surface, trying to fill up the areas where I made cuts into it or stamped. <clears throat> Why not? We'll even get some yellow in here. This might take a couple of passes to get it to really fill up. And you don't want to um, stop here. So I'll show you why in a second here. <clears throat> As this dries, I feel like I get a better angle on it. As this dries, you can see that, that it's not level with the surface anymore. That it's actually indented here and what we like to see is it even with the surface all right so that you can't see the design underneath because when we go to sand it I mean it wouldn't be bad but if you want it to look like a, a completely level surface you're going to have to make a couple of runs and keep filling in those areas so after that dries I'm going to make another pass and really fill in as much as I can and all those areas really get the, the clay, like I said, to, to drag into the cut marks because this is an inlay technique. An inlay, like the neck of a guitar or if you're going to inlay wood patterns into a um, jewelry box or anything like that, you make a cut and then you fill it with you can fill it with pearl, with gold, glass. You can do all sorts of different inlays. But for us, it's cutting the clay and then filling it with slip so that it's totally level with the surface. And then we're going to let it dry. I would not say that anyone should do this while it's wet because it's just a bummer. You'll end up, you know, just mushing the colors all over the place. So lucky for you, I have an example ready to go here. This is pretty bone dry. You can see I rush dried this tile and it curled up on me. It warped. Um, I think that, that the best way to go about this without creating too much dust is to actually just scrape it with your rib. <clears throat> and you can see I've already started scraping a little bit. All those areas that I've inlaid are um, coming to the surface and the drier the better for this. I made kind of a little vine over here was my cut and also signed my name and all those cut marks took me a while to get them full of clay but once it dries, it's really easy to, to scrape away. And you can see what's left over here is totally level with the surface and totally readable. Now over here on this side, where I just got clay all over, um, I put some, you can kind of see them in the right light, I put some blobs of blue underneath the yellow. So when I go to scrape through the yellow, I'm actually going to reveal some of that blue. It's kind of a cool technique if anyone wanted to mess with that and make some designs with blobs and then scrape the surface, it reveals what's underneath. Kind of, kind of interesting. Some people will do more than one colored blob. They'll do a white blob covered by a blue blob covered by a yellow one. And then as you scrape, you keep revealing those colors underneath. It really looks cool. 
it's a little bit of a tedious process, but with, with um, a very patient person, this inlay technique is very beautiful. And if you ever get to the level where you can work with porcelain, even more so because it just pops against the white clay body. It's really awesome. Um, I've also, I have used sandpaper. I would discourage you from using sandpaper because um, clay dust is really bad. Um, fire this and cover it with clear and you'll be able to see everything underneath it. So that's it. That is the wonderful technique known as Mishima. Um, all that crap has to go in the garbage because we don't want to discolor our clay. Good luck and happy Mishima-ing. <laughs>